Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are here to talk about my firstborn daughter's birth story. Alright, well with my second baby due next month, which is a boy, I figured it would be a perfect time to sit down and talk to you guys about my birth story with Kaya. So, my husband and I, we've been together for just about 10 years. We've been married a little over four. We got married in August of 2014 and decided to start trying to grow our family right away. I suffered from something called endometriosis and I was given about a 50-50 shot of having kids, although I did know in the back of my mind that my mom had endometriosis and went on to have five healthy, happy children. So Mike and I, we started trying to conceive in September of 2014 and we ended up finding out we were pregnant in January of 2015. So it was a little over five cycles that we were able to conceive. On January, on January 7th, 2015, I was 10 days past ovulation and I remember, I'm sorry if I'm looking down, I'm like looking at my notes that I have here, um, 10 days past ovulation. I remember Interstellar had just come out in the theaters. We were going to see it with some of our friends. The night of Interstellar. I remember we were on our way to the movie and I told Mike, I said, I do not feel good. I do not feel good. And I don't know why, but it didn't dawn on me that I could be pregnant. Um, even though we had been trying, I just, I didn't think I was pregnant. Um, but I didn't feel good. I had like bubbles popping in my tummy is what it felt like. I honestly thought I was starting to get the stomach flu. And I remember I just kind of had this aha moment while we were in Interstellar. And it seriously was like a God moment. I remember Mike, or I remember looking over at Mike and just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Mike's gonna be a dad. I'm gonna be a mom, I'm pregnant. And I knew that it was only 10 days past ovulation, so I did not take a test. I wanted to wait until my first morning pee. And then I decided to take a test at three in the morning because I randomly had to get up to go to the bathroom. Now, whether I actually had to go to the bathroom or my nerves were just getting to me, I don't know. But three in the morning on January 7th, 2015, I took a test, 10 days past ovulation. I'll insert it right here and it was positive. We were so ecstatic. We were over the moon. I remember I woke Mike up at three in the morning and I didn't get much of a reaction from him. <laughs> and I was all upset. And I'm like, well, you weren't excited. And he's like, it's three in the morning. I don't even know what's going on. And then finally the next day he ended up calling me after he went to work and was obviously over the moon. But 10 days past ovulation was my first positive. I had a very, very good pregnancy. I gained a lot of weight that first pregnancy. I gained about 100 pounds. I'm doing much better this time around. Um, I've only gained about 20 pounds so far, so I'm very happy with that. On September 29th, 2015, 7 p.m., um, that was the day that I was induced. Now, I always say I was 42 and a half weeks, but I was 41 and a half weeks. So I was almost 42 weeks um, when I went in to be induced, and that was not my choice. If I, um, if I could have gone earlier, I would have, but my practice chooses to wait until after you've hit 41 weeks in order to schedule an induction day. So I remember on induction day, September 29th, I walked in, I was feeling really crampy, I was pretty miserable because I was pretty huge, and I walked in at a, at a one, at a one centimeter, which was more than what I was dilated to just a couple days before that, so my body was starting to dilate, and I was very crampy. Um, the reason why I was really crampy, I later found out, is because Kaya was sunny side up. They inserted like Cervidil or Cytotec, I don't remember, it's been a few years now, but it was one of those cervix ripening um, pills. They put those in and let them sit all throughout the night, and I started having the worst back labor ever. It was intense you guys it was really really intense um i was throwing up from the pain and then they would come in and give me some medication to help with the pain and then i would throw up from the medication and then they would give me some anti-nausea and i was just up all night long i remember it was a terrible night 
and I wasn't expecting to have such terrible back labor. I just wasn't expecting it to be so crazy intense. After I got absolutely zero sleep, I remember 6 a.m. they came in and I was at two centimeters. And then that's when they started the Pitocin drip. And I don't know what the milligrams were at that time. It wasn't something that I necessarily paid attention to. I know they started out lower and then they kind of built their way up with the Pitocin. And by 10 a.m. I was at four centimeters. Now, I was controlling, I wasn't taking any more pain medication after 6 a.m. Um, because she had flipped and I was feeling a lot more comfortable. The back labor wasn't as intense. I was able to get on a ball and kind of bounce around. So between 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. I had progressed two centimeters. By the time I hit four centimeters, I was feeling pretty miserable again. Got back in bed, kind of labored that way and by noon they came in and they did my epidural for me everything gets really fuzzy after this because i started to black out from all the pain that i was in finally they got the epidural in but it was only working on half of my body so they flipped me over had it trickle down and then they went to go and check me and i realized that it wasn't working on the inside it was only working on the outside so which Trust me, I was really grateful that I couldn't feel the contractions, but I could 100% feel everything on the inside. So by the time I was progressing, I could feel the ring of fire, I, I felt everything. So by 2 p.m., I was at six centimeters, and that's when they came in and they broke my water. We had like a slight meconium scare. The nurse was, I think she was newer. She came in and was kind of freaking us out and said, oh, I think that's meconium. and. Mike and I got all scared and then to find out from a, a veteran nurse who came in and she said no absolutely not That's not meconium. You guys are just fine. So that was our meconium scare And then like I said everything gets really fuzzy around this point um, Two to four I don't remember a ton even like noon after I got my epidural I just kind of blacked out once I was finally able to calm down I started to get the shakes really badly. I hadn't slept the night before so I was really groggy But yeah, I was very fuzzy very out of it I kind of felt drunk and woozy and then once I had gotten to six centimeters They decided to put me on my side and put the peanut ball in between my legs and this is where I progressed very quickly so I am keeping note for this time around that once they lay me on my side and throw the peanut ball between my legs, I know I'm gonna progress very quick. Um, and that was at like 4 p.m. that they decided to put that peanut ball between my legs. I was very shaky in transition. Um, I was uncontrollably shaking, which is very normal in transition. Um, and then the nurses were having a race on the floor that day, and I went from being in last place to first place to deliver. I went very quick. At 3, 4 p.m. they put the peanut ball between my leg. Six centimeters, officially at two. And then by, I believe it was 4.30 p.m. I had hit 10 centimeters. So in that very short amount of time, they checked me at two and I was at six centimeters, broke my water, etc., etc. flipped me on my side, put the peanut ball between my legs. It was like 3.30, 4 o'clock and I was at 10 centimeters, so it's fully dilated but they did want her to labor down. They let her labor down for an hour just to make sure that um, I wouldn't have to push for as long. And 5 p.m. they had me do two practice pushes. So this, guys, this is where I realized I was feeling everything. I was crying a lot. I, I thought if I were to have to go through natural labor that I would be the one that would be cussing and screaming. Um, but I was just bawling. I was in so much pain. I was crying a lot. And I just remember I felt the urge to push. I had to push. I felt like she was falling out. <laughs> they had me do two practice pushes to see where I was at. They made me stop because I was pushing very well. I remember them telling me to stop and me saying I can't stop, I can't hold it in. I was feeling everything. I was really feeling that ring of fire at this point and I felt like I had to poop, like I had to push her out. So finally they called a doctor in and my nurse was freaking me out. You know, they called the doctor to come back and then she told me that I needed to put I needed to push as hard as I could because this was a big baby and otherwise I was going to need a c-section. She was kind of terrible, but I mean I get why she was freaking out. So finally the doctor comes in and as soon as he walks in, he looks over to the nurse and says, tell room 
blah 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 to stop pushing we need to deliver her immediately remember I've only pushed like two times and she's like fallen out she's like ready to come out um, and by the time the doctor got his stool in there got all gloved up was ready to go that was about it felt like forever but I'm sure it was like five minutes I was feeling everything I was bawling it was really intense for me but I only had to push for 15 minutes and really I wasn't pushing the entire time 5 45 p.m. the doctor sat down told me to push they were guiding my pushes um, and by 6 3 p.m. my chubby chubby little girl was born at 22 and a half inches long nine pounds two ounces and she seriously you guys I have to insert a little clip of what she looked like as soon as she was born So cute you guys she was so cute the nurses like held her up and said well here's your toddler <laughs> and I just remember thinking oh my god she looks just like my dad which is a really weird thought to have but I look a lot like my dad and as soon as she was born she just she had my she you could tell that she had my eyes because she had my dad's eyes so yeah I had a really beautiful labor I yes I had a lot of pain but that's normal it's to be expected and really I couldn't have asked for anything better I barely tore um, I just had a couple of stitches I remember recovery was really good the only thing was right after I had her I did get really sick um, and I kind of had this like out of body experience where I felt like I was kind of like watching myself and what I was going through I didn't really know what was going on again a lot of this is probably because I did not sleep at all the night before so sleep deprivation but I was not feeling super great and I wasn't up for having family members in and out quite yet and then finally I got into um, my room after my delivery room and I was able to kind of settle in um, my first night was a little rough. I remember I was nursing. Um, she latched right away. She was such a good latcher. She was a good feeder right away. Um, I really wanted to breastfeed, so that made me very happy, but I was so sick. I'd be breastfeeding her, and then I'd be like throwing up in a bag, and I'd be breastfeeding her, and I'd be throwing up in a bag, and I'd be so tired, and I... I couldn't even keep my eyes open. They ended up taking her to the nursery for a couple hours so that I could sleep that night. Um, and then they brought her back to me once I was feeling a little bit better because I was kind of in rough shape. But after a good night's rest, after a good shower, I'm happy to report that everything went super well. To prevent any tearing or anything like that, I did use evening primrose oil the first time around, which I will be doing again um, because I had such a beautiful recovery. You guys, I was up and at them within like a day of having her. I felt totally normal. It was a little sore down there for like the first week, um, but really, I felt great. I was out shopping at Target with her within a week. Probably won't be doing that this time around with uh, baby boy just because it is cold and flu season and um, it's probably going to be negative 30 outside because again I'm from Minnesota and the middle of January is very cold here and I did want to add and this is just for my memory as well but Kaya was such a good sleeper I remember after the first couple of nights of feeding she would sleep for three four hour stretches at a time of course she did cluster feed like once in a while where she was up like every hour or two hours but for the most part, Kaya was a perfect baby. So three, four hours through the night, and Mike and I really loved those baby, those newborn baby days. We cherished them so much. All right, you guys, my battery's flashing at me again, so I am gonna scoot, but I hope you enjoyed this birth story of my daughter, Kaya. I cannot wait to share my birth story with my baby boy in about a month. Stay tuned for the birth video coming out as well. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and my birth videos and birth stories. Turn on the notification button so that you don't miss when I upload. And I will see you guys sometime in the very near future. Okay, bye guys. Bye.